Hello, I'm Robin Vincent and welcome to Surface Sessions here on a lovely spring day in Norfolk. Today we are looking at the new Surface 3. What can it do? Is it any good? That's what we're going to see and we're going to compare it directly with the Surface Pro 3. Mm. Let's have a look size-wise. Yeah, you see that? You see that? Okay, is it smaller? It's lighter? Is it more fruity? Don't know, we like the kickstand. Things like that. So we're going to get right under the skin, into the screen, touch it all about. Going to plug in Pro Tools, Cubase, Reason, Ableton, Machine, Spark, Stage Light, Staff Pad. Can you believe it? So much stuff. And we're going to be showing you exactly how well it performs in relation to the Surface Pro 3. We know which one's going to win. It's not a question of what's going to win. It's a question of how well does this run compared to this as some kind of way of comparing things? I don't know. Is it helpful? Let's hope so. So here's the Surface 3 with its big brother, the Surface Pro 3. And you can see, hopefully, the difference in sizes, even from that angle. Let's get in a little bit closer. There's the 3. There's the Pro 3, all looking pretty. So physically, you know, it's a little bit smaller. It's a little bit smaller, but not a whole lot. When it comes to the desktop, they seem very similar uh, because of the scaling, it's set to a very similar resolution. But let's just have a quick explore of some of the physicalities. Uh, firstly, this the Surface 3 is is just lighter. Uh, it feels much lighter in the hand. The Surface Pro 3 has that kind of weight that makes you want to be a little bit more careful with it. Whereas this feels more like an iPad weight that you could sort of throw it around and you wouldn't you wouldn't really mind so much. Uh, the kickstand is something that's of interest with the Surface 3. You've got this. Whoops. You've got one to three levels of kick whereas on the Pro 3 of course it can go wherever you like. The advantage of that on the Pro is that you can go that flat whereas this is as flat as you can go on the 3. I like the rigidity of that. When you have your surface, when you have the Pro set up at a certain angle like that and you start working on it, it can go away from you. So actually, the fixed stand is probably no bad thing. Um, I would just like there to be one more setting so it could go flatter still. The power on the side with the three, it's just a little USB adapter like you find on many things, which makes it a little bit more compatible and accessible, I guess. You can use your phone charger to, to charge it, potentially yourself out however I always liked this on this magnetic thing on the Surface Pro a bit like it was an Apple device because it was over designed and you know and sort of lovely to use for no reason because it's just a power plug so I, I like that okay it's not very standard but I liked it uh, whereas this is a bit you know clunkier it plugs in blah 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 that's fine but it's just an aesthetic if I go to the maximum resolution on each, you'll see the difference between the screens. So I go down to 100%. And you can see on both screens, actually, that's pretty small and pretty similar. Screen brightness and loveliness seems the same as far as I can tell. It looks very similar to me. Oh, one other thing is that the uh, the keyboards are interchangeable, so I can stick that on there, like so, or on this one, although it fits better on here, obviously, uh, or with the, the larger one on this one, although you don't get the magnetic pull-up uh, on using the big one on here, and you don't get it on there. So although they fit and work, 
they don't they don't magnetically clip on do you see what i mean do you see what i'm doing trackpad's a little smaller on here uh, you lose the edge off the keyboard obviously for the size but otherwise the keys are the same size as far as i can tell trackpad's a little smaller i don't know if you noticed when i was using this that actually i can use the pen on both it's not uh, there's not the pen isn't kind of dedicated to one machine. I can use the pen on multiple machines on any machine, I suppose. I'm not sure why, but I can, which is nice. So that's a that's a good thing. So potentially, if I was to have more than one machine, you wouldn't need to have a pen for every device. You wouldn't necessarily need to have a keyboard for every device either. Hmm. Interesting things. Right. Let's try cold boot test. Ready. One. Two three go this one this one this one this one which one is gonna be first go oh well I think that's too close to call too close to call Okay, let's see what they're doing in terms of computerness. Run CPU ID and let's run the hardware monitor to check temperatures. So this is an Intel Atom Braswell. It's using the X7 78700 CPU at 1.6 gigahertz, currently running at 2.4 gigahertz. And the temperature is around 60 degrees. So it's not currently idling, but then it may be because I've put up a screen brightness. Uh, oh, it's dropped to 1.6 now. And over here, we have the Haswell Core i5 processor 4300U at 1.9 gigahertz, which is what it's currently sort of idling at. So just by way of a little experiment, let's run uh, Prime95, which is kind of a CPU burn-in test, just to see what happens. on the Pro and the processor is up to 2.5, 2.6 gigahertz currently, temperature 88 degrees. Over here the Atom is up to 2.4, temperature is 85 and climbing. Just going to see if there's a point at which the speed drops so the Pro is now up at 90 degrees. You can hear the fan and now the core speed is starting to come down. 2.3, fan increasing even more, 2.2. Over here it's also on 90 degrees. The speed is still at 2.4. Over here the speed has dropped to under two gigahertz now and the temperature has come down to under 80. Over here we're still rocking 2.4 and the temperatures are over 90. It's just starting to drop over here now down to 2.3. Let's just see how hot they are to hold. Close this bit. There's definitely a hot spot in this back space here, but it's not uncomfortable in any stretch. With this one the heat is always at this top right corner. Again it's not uncomfortable, but you can definitely feel the heat and the fans going crazy in there to bring that down. So the Surface Pro is very ready to clock down when it gets too hot, whereas with the 3, it doesn't seem quite so ready to do that. It was able to stay at 2.4 gigahertz, running at 90 degrees, and that seemed to be fine, which is really interesting because potentially this means that the, the Surface 3 is going to be more stable using music applications. With the Surface Pro, you get so far and you load up a whole stack of plugins, but when you hit a certain temperature, 
you then have to unload quite a few plugins to bring the temperature down as the fans come on and it needs to sort itself out because it clocks down and ruins the performance. Whereas here, potentially, it's not going to do that. Now you can run far more plugins on here than you can on here and I'm going to demonstrate that shortly. But the Surface 3 might be a really nice stable little platform for smaller projects and stuff. We'll see, that's what we're here for, that's what we're trying to work out. So that's a very interesting comparison. But now let's move into talking about music software. Let's see if I can create some kind of decent comparison that makes some kind of sense to show all you good people what the Surface 3 can do, if anything. So for the purposes of all of this, I'm going to be using the Fast Track, Avid Fast Track Duo as the audio interface, as I have in most cases. It's going to be plugged in via a USB 3 hub, powered USB 3 hub, into the USB 3 socket on the side. This is going to allow me to plug in a few different devices, uh, a MIDI keyboard for instance I've got over here, and the audio interface, also iLox, all that kind of jazz. We go into the control panel, I'm going to set it to 256 samples, that seems to be a good standard place to start, and it will be set to the same on the Pro 3. So let's check how fast Pro Tools 12 loads. And let's open the demo project. So let's hit play and see how we do. So it peaked around 50% usage overall. You can't rely on these little um, system usage gauges as being a completely accurate representation of what's going on, but it's gonna be good enough for our comparison as we're comparing two systems using exactly the same tools, then that's gonna be helpful. Let's give Cubase a go. Demo song again.
let's get some reason into the action. So reason eight, let's load up a demo song. And see how it goes. Ableton Live. For Ableton Live, I'm going to use a set that I use when performing live to see whether it's capable of running it. I've not run it, so I don't know. So this is gonna be interesting for me as well. Here we go. pretty good it's not a complex project particularly but I've got you know a dozen tracks going on and things going about and stuff looping and triggering and that and that worked flawlessly not a glitch not a problem stage light Let's try a little bit of spark. Thank you. 
machine too. Lastly, we're going to use a door bench test. Door bench puts down 40 tracks of sine waves that you then insert plugins over the top of while playing back a, a simpler song. And as you add plugins, it builds up on the CPU usage, and at some point it'll crap out and start crackling. And then you have to back off until you can get stable playback and that's the benchmark. So let's check out what the Surface Pro 3 can do. So far I've got two rows of 40 plugins loaded, so that's 80, plus I've got another 10, Twenty, thirty, plus an extra thirty, so that's a hundred and ten plugins. And as you can see, it's on pretty much the maximum. But playback is still stable, which is what we want. And I'll add a few more in to demonstrate what happens. These are all currently bypassed and I'm just re-enabling each plugin as I go. There. So that's the break point. So let's bypass that one again and try to get stable playback. So that appears to be stable at 35, so that's 40 plus 40, 80 plus 35, 110, 115. Same test on the Surface 3. This time we've managed so far only one complete insert, so that's 40 plugins, and I'm now up to 26, and the CPU measurement here is just about at the top, so this is where we're gonna see the break. Everything is moving very slowly. Okay, I'll try one more. Okay, there's a break point. That's a 72. Let's come back, 71. So 
at 71 it's still giving an occasional glitch so let's move that back one and call it stable at 70. There is one other device that I'd like to do a comparison on. And move these out of the way. The Pro Tools PC. So the Pro Tools PC features a Core i7, Haswell E processor, six cores, built by multi music technology and this is really to demonstrate what a real audio computer can do so here we are on the pro tools pc running exactly the same test And as you can see, we have every single insert activated over every single channel. So that's 40 channels, eight inserts, 320 plugins running. And the VST performance is, what's that, 60, 75%? So that there is what a real audio computer can do. So let's have a side-by-side -side look at StaffPad, which is uh, a new notation writing app, which has become a bit of a darling of Microsoft at the moment because of its really cool use of the pen. But let's have a look to see how well they go. Swallows and Amazons, let's load the demo score up. There we go. Now here's a good point. Did you notice the volume difference between the two? This is up 100%, this is up 100%, and generally just from being in front of them, the, the new Surface 3 seems a great deal louder. To try to draw another comparison, I'm going to run some, well, the most complicated Photoshop files that I can find, which probably aren't very complicated, but to use those to see how quickly Photoshop might load up and the sort of performance you can expect, kind of, I don't know. Anyway, so let's try this one here. I'm going to try to double tap them at the same time. So let's try the next one, which I think is a much bigger project, but probably less complicated. Ready?
Interesting that time. These are working with much larger pictures. And you can see the performance on the Surface Pro 3 is much smoother. One more. Two, three, go. Again, working with a very large image this time. That's only at 16%. Much smoother over here. It may look like an alarming photo, <laughs> but she's supposed to be asleep is the idea. I wasn't meaning to, to fake to zoom in on that particular thing. See the zoom there is actually really good. I've never actually seen that before. That's extraordinary. Let's see if I can do the same thing here. Yeah. A Photoshop comparison at a very basic level. I hope that's helpful. So there you go, what a natty little tablet this is. I mean, it's $500, 400 quid. It's an awesome little thing. It's not as powerful. It's not as powerful as the Surface Pro 3. It's not gonna run the same number of plugins. It's not gonna really run the same number of instruments, but it does very well. And the way the processor is, it doesn't clock down quite so readily. So you'll be able to run a very stable system with this without any fear of it getting too hot and suddenly having to climb down in frequency. It's gonna run pretty solid. Once you've worked out what it can do, it's gonna run that probably more than likely without fail, which is pretty good, we like that. Should not get bogged down in the numbers though. I mean, the comparisons of percentage of CPU meters in Cubase in Pro Tools or, or whatever software you're using, those things are not a way to measure two computers next to each other. They can be helpful, they give an indication, but often, particularly with the different technology there is in these two fellas, is that they work differently. So that CPU meter is not always gonna be, gonna have a direct correlation. Do you see what I mean? So you just use it as a guide. So if there's only sort of 10% more CPU being used up in the surface, it doesn't mean that this is only 10% less powerful than the other one. It's just not that simple. It's all complicated and kind of messed up and crazy, but that's what we like. But what we do know is that the Surface 3 is completely capable of running professional music software. It's probably most ideal at running something like Machine or the Spark, something which is self-contained and that you've built projects on to perform with live because it's, I don't think it's gonna let you down in that situation. You can't pack it full of the same number of plugins as you would on a, on a larger machine or on a desktop machine, of course. But once you've boiled your project down to what you actually need to run with in a live situation, I think it could be, I think it could be really useful. Now, what I don't wanna hear is you coming up to me and saying, oh, you said it could run this really well and on my machine it doesn't because I don't know, I'm just sort of making suggestions. I've shown you what can happen and what it can run. And you know, your mileage may vary. There's lots of factors involved. You could have a load of stuff running in the background. You could have a crap audio interface. Who knows? Just gotta give it a go. But I think what I have shown is that the Surface 3, even though it's designed to be a light mobile, kind of almost like a big phone really in terms of power, that it has enormous lot of potential for smaller projects and live performance. So, yeah, I like it. Am I gonna keep it? Am I gonna keep my Service Pro 3? I don't know. I'm gonna keep both, I think. I'm that kind of person. Until next time, join us again on surfaceproaudio.com. 
multimusictechnology.com and come and talk to me about it. Helicopter.